You're at the high level for the more significant bits. Okay, well, that's a tour of the hardware. Um, we should fire it up and get it on screen and give you a tour of the features. Okay, we're looking here at my 10-inch uh, LCD display. Uh, quite a cheap one I bought on eBay. Uh, the reason why I went for this LCD is that it gives me a screen size that is most um, similar to a real VT100 at about a 10-inch diagonal. Um, this display has a native resolution of 800 by 600, which is perfect because that's what I'm driving the output at from um, the, the VT132. So I'll just reset the VT132 uh, so we can see it go through a, a full power cycle. The blue screen is the LCD display when there's no signal provided. You saw briefly there a wait message. Uh, that's the same as on a real VT100. Uh, that's when it's accessing its settings from the NVRAM, a feature that I'm implementing but isn't finished yet. Um, and then we have a blank screen and a cursor. So I'll reset the RC2014. And you can see we drop into the small computer monitor. Um, the alignment of the screen is all the fault of this little LCD monitor. Let's see if we can just fiddle that. It's auto adjusting is not brilliant. Um, it's not really, I don't think it's the fault of the um, VT132 because I get a perfect image when I put it on a, a bigger VGA display that I have. So let's just quickly tweak the horizontal position so we can make sure everything's in view. Okay, so here we are. Um, we've got a VT100 terminal. Let's talk about some of the things that uh, won't be immediately obvious. So I mentioned this is running at 800 by 600 uh, resolution. That's the resolution output from the VT132. And it achieves that by scanline doubling. So as far as the um, program's concerned, it's outputting on an 800 pixel wide and 300 pixel high field uh, viewport. Um, the Character cells, as they uh, are, should be in a real VT100, are um, basically, I guess, 9 by 10, but with an effective 10 by 10 resolution due to pixel uh, stretching. So um, I'm doing the same thing. So at uh, 10 pixels wide per character cell and uh, 80, 80 columns, that gives us our 800 horizontal pixel resolution. And we're using um, 24 lines at 10 um, pixels per character cell, that's 240 vertically. Um, so we're using 240 of the 300 pixel viewport. Uh, of course, each line's being doubled, so that um, gives them the elongated vertical stretch appearance. And we'll have a look a little later at uh, the fact that we can actually turn off uh, interlacing um, as you could on a VT100 and get the scan lines. All right. Um, so a quick you know, look at the basic features and functions. Um, if we jump into a disk that's got a bit of software that we should all be familiar with that uh, looks for, a that's built to work with a VT100 terminal, like WordStar 4 in this case, um, you can see that we are, oh, I don't have any useful documents to open here, sorry about that, not very well prepared. Um, but you can see that we've got a pretty um, standard uh, VT100 experience taking place here. Um, let's do some of the basics like a survey. And you'll notice at this point that we're, um, doesn't, we're not having smooth scrolling. Um, I've set, currently got that set off um, by default. Uh, and this is one of the features that wasn't well implemented in uh, the version of the VT100 code in FabGL. So I've enhanced that. Uh, it was present, but just not sort of fully functional. So I've enhanced that and I'll demonstrate smooth scrolling in just a second. But the first main thing that I wanted to introduce into the VT132 were proper VT100 um, menus, setup screens. So I've uh, grabbed a hold of the application key on the keyboard to take us into this normal series of setup screens. So here's the set standard setup screen A, which lets us do uh, all the usual stuff around setting tab stops. Um, not very, not a particularly interesting screen. Um, 
so you can move the marker across the bottom here and set a tab stop, which I'll do in a second. Uh, the other key difference straight up is you'll notice that up in the corner here, there's an online indicator. And if I use the four, the key number four, uh, we can switch between local and online. I've included that indicator on the setup screens because um, there's not a LED on the keyboard that would make sense to reuse for that purpose. So I thought it'd be better to use have a, an on-screen indication of online or a local um, behavior of the VT100. One thing that's always frustrated me with VT100 setup screens is the lack of help. Um, you need to get the manual out or be very familiar with what all the key presses are. So one little enhancement I've made is to build in some help on each of the setup screens. So here we can uh, use the two key to set and clear tab stops. Um, we can clear all the tab stops, which is a common problem. And in later VT terminals, a deck put in a key press combination to put back the default tab stops. Can't remember if I've done that. No, I haven't. Control T. Um, but a zero, which isn't uh, in the help I notice, will reset the terminal and put our tab sp stops back to their default position. What else can we do from this screen? That's pretty much it. Local or online, um, clear and set tab stops, or a press of button five to change to setup screen B. All right, setup screen B um, is features and serial communications. Uh, you'll notice immediately that we have higher speeds shown on the screen here than you would get on a normal VT100. I thought there was no point keeping it down to 19200. So uh, if we cycle through the available speeds, we have everything from as low as 300 in the usual steps, but all the way up to 15, uh, 115200. Uh, we can't adjust the transmit and receive speeds independently. I don't know if that's really a feature that people would need anyway. Um, most of the time you run your transmit and receive at the same speed and that's all we can do with the uh, ESP32. All of these other cryptic settings where we move across and turn things off and on, I know this one for, for a fact is um, the key click. I don't know if you're hearing that key click. Let me just uh, move the microphone over to the buzzer. So right now, the default is that we have key click. Every time you hit a key on the keyboard, you get the key click. Um, we can turn that off. And now there's no key click. Turn key click back on. So that's a feature that uh, was missing from the VT100 code in FabGL. Uh, not a feature that I think we desperately need, but I did want to aim for authenticity. But again, this screen's really hard to know what all the settings are. So once again, I've built in some help. Not everything here is implemented. Um, you can't switch between ANSI and VT52 modes here. I've never really had a need for VT52 mode. You can get to it with the right escape sequences, but I haven't built it in here. Um, the margin bell, again, it's a feature I've implemented. Uh, it's a feature I don't know why you'd ever want to use it. It just means that uh, when the cursor gets to eight, eight character positions before the edge of the screen, you get an extra bell. Um, I'm sure it was important once upon a time, but that does work. Uh, I tend to leave it switched off. Um, basic stuff like inverting the screen is operational. Um, auto repeat works, um, but let's get on and show smooth scrolling. So let's turn smooth scrolling on. Let's turn X on, X off, on. And now we're not going to see smooth scrolling until we have something a little larger. Let's get that survey again. And you can see that we now have smooth scrolling. Um, just like a real VT100, if you enable smooth scrolling and you don't turn on X on, X off, there is a good chance that you will lose characters. Um, smooth scrolling is great when you um, have things scrolling by. Um, it's, it's quite a nice feature. Um, a, a thing that I, a, something that I found on the internet um, that was a really good test of sort of VT100 compatibility 
was uh, some of the um, VT100 art, and this one's a favorite of mine. It runs a little quickly on uh, when we have the RC2014 clocked at its highest speed, uh, which I do at the moment, and we're running uh, 115200 board. But um, I'll run it anyway, and then maybe again I'll run it at a lower speed later. Whoop, I think we have to type that rather than just try and run the file. All right, it ran a little quickly at this speed, but at least it shows that we've got a, a pretty accurate and um, faithful VT100 uh, escape sequence implementation. Um, I will start to put some documentation up on the website soon as well, giving you all the details of, of what's included in the escape code support. Um, it's time we finally had a look at the uh, extra setup screen that I've added because this VT100 terminal does go a little further than a stock terminal. Um, and so to get access to those features, I've included this setup C screen. So this is non-standard for a VT100. Uh, I give credit here to FabGL and Fabrizio for his work there. We can finally get to see some of the details about the resolution and viewport size, uh, the, number, the characters um, level that we're supporting. And it is useful to know how much available memory there is because some of the features that I'm going to show later on uh, do consume most of the available memory. So let's look at the help and see what other things we can change from this screen. Um, so by default, we have the VT100 character set, which is uh, really only 7-bit uh, ASCII with some special char graphics characters in the first uh, 32 characters. But um, if you end up using this terminal to access anything that sort of is a, a modern ANSI implementation, there's a fairly high chance that it'll expect um, a, a different code page, uh, effectively VGA graphics. So I've built that in so you can switch to a, a code page 437, uh, effectively VGA compatible font. It's not as attractive. Um, VGA fonts were not originally uh, designed to fit in a 10 by 10 character cell but this is a good enough for the job. Um, we might see some, some that in action a little later. Um, going back to the help, let's see what else we can change. Um, there may be some use cases where you'd actually want a 25 line display. So a built-in support for that. So you can toggle between the currently 20, the default 24 lines. And there we go. You can see that consumed a little bit more of the available memory. Uh, but now we have an 80 by 25 Maybe. line display. Okay, switching back to 24 line mode. And I'm not sure how well this is going to show up here, um, but if you can see the detail of the color palette at the bottom of the screen, that's a kind of standard 16 color ANSI palette. Uh, VGA graphics had a slightly modified palette particularly in the top eight colors. So uh, for those who really need it, uh, you can toggle to the VGA palette, uh, which actually replaces yellow with brown as well. Um, again, not sure how well this is showing up on the video. Um, I don't have a, apologize that I'm having to film this sort of with a camera off the front of a VGA display. I don't have a VGA capture device or an HDMI capture device for that matter. Uh, if anyone's got any suggestions, please leave a, a uh, uh, hint in, in the comments down below and tell me of a good capture device that you'd recommend. Uh, that also goes for if there are any features that you think I've skipped past and haven't shown that you'd like me to go to into in a further video, uh, please provide a comment down below and I'll endeavor to uh, read those and uh, make a catch-up video showing off some of the other features. And the final thing you can do here is you can, like the other setup menus, you can move through um, the colors down here and you can change the default colors so we can set a default uh, background say of cyan and a default foreground of yellow and that way uh, when we go back into terminal mode um, 
that becomes the default um, color combination. Not sure how well that selection of colors is showing up on the video, however. Um, so I'm going to quickly head back and change our defaults. Uh, but maybe if you prefer a green uh, display, so we can set our foreground default to green and the background default to black. So if you do want green uh, and you can't remember the character uh, escape codes to do that, you can push, uh, you can use this setup screen to push the um, default colors into that, into your preferred uh, color combination. Uh, the final thing uh, that I've just remembered I didn't show on the first setup screen is, uh, and I think it's also missing from the help, let's just check, yes it is, uh, and that is that we do have 132 column support. So I've just switched into 132 column. You can see that the um, tab uh, settings bar has updated to show uh, the full 132 columns on screen. And um, if we head back into CPM and do something like the survey again, whoop, you will see that uh, clearly that's only taking up a little over half the screen now um, and not exploiting the full 132. Um, SuperCalc 2 is already configured to work in 132 column mode. You've only got to change one setting in its config. Uh, I will demonstrate that in a separate video. Uh, works very well in 132 column mode here on the, um, on the VT132. So just switching back into 80 column mode. Um, so they are the main features of the VT100 side of things. Um, I think I've shown you everything that I can remember. Oh no, one last feature, let's change into local mode. Um, I have also implemented the bell. Hello, let's get the RC2014 back. No, oh, I'm in local mode. Gonna get out of local mode, go back online, and now we've, we've got control again. Um, I'm going to put the mic near the buzzer and um, again back into local mode and show you that I have implemented the bell and that is a proper 800 hertz um, just like a VT100 bell. Um, it's also running effectively, um, it, it's a non-blocking bell so when the bell occurs it doesn't hold up um, the display of more incoming characters, it kind of runs as a separate little timer task uh, so that it doesn't interfere with comms. All right, well that is, as I say, largely the, the VT100 side of, of the um, house. But remember that we've got that second uh, serial connection for port B on the RC2014. So let's have a look at what that's connected to.